Hi, I'm Dr. John Martini, And just in case you have read my book, The Values Factor, you'll know I reference in The Values Factor the importance of living in alignment with what you value most. So you can live congruently and wake up your leadership. And I describe in that book and in many of my presentations that our values are actually are derived from our voids. In other words, what we think is most missing in our life becomes most important. If we perceive that we don't have wealth, we look for wealth. We don't have a relationship, we look for relationship. We, look, we don't have business, we look for business. Our voids determine our values. But I'd like to go a little step further and take a deeper look at what our voids may be and go into it in a way that you may never have imagined before. Let, so just let me unpack this and let me un develop this so you can really appreciate what voids are. Let's say that you're walking down the street and you run into somebody that you, you admire and they're very beautiful, very attractive, and there's somebody that you're, you've got your eye on. And you're a little infatuated and you put them on a pedestal and you actually minimize yourself and compare yourself to them and minimize yourself to them because you put them on a pedestal. Now this could be somebody that's attractive or it could be somebody you think is more intelligent or somebody that's more successful in business or, or maybe a better stable relationship or maybe social, more in social influential or possibly uh, more inspired or maybe better fitness. It doesn't really matter what the thing you're admiring or infatuated with, but anytime you put somebody above you, you tend to minimize you relative to them. The moment you're too humble to admit what you see in them inside you, and you minimize you and exaggerate them, you have a disowned part of yourself, a dismemberment, as Plato would describe, and a void that's now created in your life. Because we basically disowned, dismembered, and deflected it. We're not honoring that what we see in them is inside us. So we have this disowned part. This disowned part is one half of a void. Now we have also moments when we actually are walking down the street, we meet somebody that we think we're superior to, and we look down on and maybe resent or negate. We don't mean to do this. We don't really want to judge people, but we very commonly do. And now we're exaggerating ourselves as we're putting them down, and we're looking down on them from up above. We're proud, maybe, thinking we're smarter than them, we're more successful than them, we have more money than them, or we have more more influence or a better relationship or more spiritual awareness or something. Again, we may not want to do this, but the reality is we very commonly minimize or exaggerate ourselves. We have sort of this dysmorphic response to people. The second we do, we're too proud to admit what we see in them inside us. Again, dismemberment, disownment, and kind of a disempowerment because now we're exaggerating ourselves and minimizing them. If we exaggerate ourselves and minimize them, we'll tend to project our values onto them and try to get them to live in our values. And if we minimize ourselves to somebody, we'll probably inject their values and try to live in their values, both of which are futile, because they live in their values and we live in our values, and trying to do the opposite or trying to live in theirs or get them to live in ours is basically futile. So in the process of doing it, these are disowned parts. And anytime we disown a part, we've created a void. And our consciousness knows that we're judging, and our consciousness knows that it's not, it's stressful because we have futility. So in order to liberate that from that, we automatically want to fulfill those voids by owning those traits and transcending that judgment and realize that the seer, the seeing, and the seen are the same and give ourselves permission to own all parts of us, the hero and the villain, the saint and the sinner, the virtue and the vice inside ourselves. If we can't embrace all those parts, we can't be full and whole. I always say that in my seminar, The Breakthrough Experience, at the level of the essence of the soul, uh, nothing's missing in us. At the level of the existence of the senses, things appear to be missing in us. And we go around and we're judging things in the terrestrial world, the world of trial, instead of uh, inspiring our life in the celestial world, the world of harmony. Now, the same thing occurs inside when we value things. If we're living by our highest value in life, we're more objective and we're able to see both sides of things and own traits. When we're living by lower values because we're comparing ourselves to other people, we tend to automatically polarize and disown parts and judge. So every time we judge and we, get a, we have a fantasy or we have a nightmare, we infatuate or resent, we look up or we look down, we're creating a pair of voids that determine the value. 
that we're now striving to integrate those. The hierarchy of our values is derived from our voids, and the hierarchy of our voids determine our values and determine where we're going. So all the voids that we've created because of our judgments are leading us to actually the values that we have to determine our destiny. And our destiny is about owning all the parts and having fulfillment, filling full all those parts that are empty. Now, some, what's interesting is you could be infatuated with somebody, and the second you infatuate with some trait about their life or some behavior that they have, the very opposite to that is somebody you'll resent. And you'll bring up in your mind somebody that reminds you of that opposite simultaneously. So every time you judge, you're creating a pair of opposites in the void that make up a complete void that, that drive our values. And that value is, again, the thing we're trying to fill. So the fulfillment of our values is actually the fulfillment of our voids and owning all the traits, because we're here to learn to own it all. We realize nothing's missing in us. It's what the ancient Gnostics call the pleroma, the fulfillment of the realization of, that nothing's missing in our human nature. And I think that to having the understanding of what these voids are coming from and driving our values, this is the secret of fulfillment. Now, if you live by your highest value, your telos, as I call it, your chief aim, your, your purpose in life, which is your highest value, you have the highest probability of fulfilling the greatest amount of voids with the greatest amount of value. It's the secret value that gives you the most power in life. So if you're not prioritizing your life and filling your day with high priority actions that inspire you, you're not going to have as much fulfillment of all those voids of all those judgments. And you're not going to be able to have more appreciation and love for yourself. Every human being wants to be loved and appreciated for who they are. And who they are is an expression of their highest value. And their highest value is where they actually maximize the integration of the voids into the greatest fulfillment and value. So by living by your highest value, you integrate the most amount of voids and fulfill the greatest amount of voids with the greatest amount of value. So I just wanted to go and elaborate on those voids for a moment, because all the judgments you have in your life are impacting your destiny. And by going in there and owning all the parts, instead of being too proud or too humble to admit there, but by actually realizing that whatever you see in others is inside you, and giving yourself permission to own that is what brings fulfillment because we want to love and we want to appreciate life. And the second we actually bring ourselves into equanimity and bring ourselves to equity with other people, we have the greatest potential to empower all seven areas of our life. It helps us in our brain. It helps us in our business. It helps us in our finances. It helps us in our relationship. It helps us in our social life, our physical health and symptoms, and our inspiration. So by going in there and identifying what your voids are, determining your values, and prioritizing your values, you have the greatest potential to do the greatest fulfillment in your life. So I just want to go off on that uh, and explain a little bit more about those voids and values so you have a deeper understanding of how your judgments impact your life and how living by priority can transcend the judgments and help you have fulfillment.